having a firm belief in each and every word in this dua. And of course, we as Muslims, we should learn from the Quran. That's why I want very quickly to tell you a summary about this verse. And actually the surah where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned the entire story. I wanted to share with you some verses from Surah Al-Qalam. And Surah Al-Qalam means the pen. Surah Al-Qalam, one of the early surahs revealed to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When he was in Mecca, where the persecution, where he faced the severe persecution and punishment for some of his companions and he was so depressed by the people of Quraysh they refused his da'wah they came against him they started to murder some of his companions in front of his eyes and he tries to find any gap and he tries to convey the da'wah like other prophets, like the messengers before him. But he didn't listen. At that time, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed Surah Al-Qalam. And this is my invitation to you to recite Surah Al-Qalam today. Try to learn how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala supported his Prophet وسلم, at the early days of da'wah. But because of the time, I want you to listen to that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to him, Fasbir li hukmi rabbik. Be patient and accept the decree of your Lord. And do not be like the man who is the companion of the whale. Of course, Allah is talking about the Prophet Yus, Jonah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this surah, reminding the Prophet Muhammad, do not be like him when he called out Allah and he was depressed. Do not be in his situation. Mostly in the Quran, Allah is asking us to be like the Prophet, to follow the steps of the Prophet. But this is the first Prophet Allah is talking about in the Quran to the Prophet Muhammad, and He is telling him, Do not be like Yunus. What Yunus did, what the Prophet Yunus made. You have to learn. Allah had sent him to his people in Nainawa. Nainawa in Al Iraq, in Al Musil. And he was in the time period after Sayyidina Musa and before Sayyidina Isa. As we find some of the differences in this opinion, but he came to those people to call them to Allah and they refused time after time he tried with them everything he struggled with them and to make the long story short he came to the point that he fell up he gave up and finally he found the clouds in the sky and he thought that this is the punishment of Allah to them then he decided by himself without a command from Allah that I give up, I am not a messenger anymore, I will leave those people and move. That was his mistake. That's why Allah said, do not be like him. Do not do like, not to, not to, not, he's not allowing him like to, to leave his people. Allah said, be patient. You will, you will receive a lot. You will see, you will see lots of things to come to you. You will find your people will ex 
expel you, you will find Hamza is going to be killed, your uncle is going to die, Khadija is going to die, you will lose each and every support next to you, but do not do like you. And that's what, that was the main message. And as you know, he left his people and his people started to see the clouds. And they said, in huwa illa aridun muntiruna. It is just a cloud came to give us rain and prosperity. And then they discovered that it's strange clouds and maybe the storm started to go and maybe it has the punishment of Allah to them. And they did something amazing. They decided. When you check the Quran, Thamud, Hud, Fir'aun, all the people came against the punishment of Allah and Allah destroyed them. But the people of Yunus, they repented. When they saw the clouds, when the storm started to happen, they acknowledged their sins and they repented to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then Allah turned the cloud to be in the ocean. Who is going to the ocean? The Prophet Yunus. Who is moving? He thought that he is moving against the direction of the cloud. But what happened? Allah changed the punishment and Allah forgave them. Allah gave them another chance. And Yunus at that time went to the ocean and when he went to the boat and the storm started to happen at that time. The people of the boat decided to reduce weight. They started to like throw their luggages and everything to reduce weight of the boat. And they discovered that some of us has to be thrown, has to be overboarded. And what happened? They draw lots. They draw lots and the lot one time after time after time, three times, it comes to the Prophet Yunus. So he realized it's a message from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he was thrown in the ocean, in the midst of the storm, in the midst of the night. Once he jumped, the whale got the order from Allah to swallow him and not to crush his bones and not to eat him. Just keep him inside your mouth. And that was the command from Allah to the whale. At that time, Sayyiduna Yunus thought that no way, I'm going to die. That's a whale. It's not a joke. I will die. He thought himself that now he is dead. And all of a sudden, he started to move his leg. And he found himself that he can move inside the whale. And at that time, he prostrated to Allah. He made sujood. And he said, Oh Allah, now I acknowledge my fault. I acknowledge my sin. I acknowledge that I did something wrong. And now you turn your punishment from my people to me. He acknowledged this. And he made sujood to Allah. And then Allah ordered the whale to go deeper. And the whale went deeper. And at that time, he started to hear some voices around him. Some bubbles around him. Then Allah inspired him that these are the creatures of Allah are glorifying Allah. He got the reminder and he started to say this beautiful dua. La ilaha illa anta subhanak inni kuntu min al-dhalimi. There is no God only but you. How perfect you are. I was one of the oppressors. This is the dua of Yunus alayhi salam. And he kept saying this dua and he was under this test. And lots of questions. How did he survive? What about the acids of the whale? Damaged his skin. 
and his body. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran, فَلَوْلَا أَنَّهُ كَانَ مِنَ الْمُسَبِّحِينَ Hadn't he been amongst those who glorified Allah? Allah would cause the will to destroy him. What saved him? This dua. Allah said he would remain forever inside the belly of the whale. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that he saved him because of this dua. وَأَنْبَتْنَا عَلَيْهِ شَجَرَةً مِنْ يَقْتِينَ Allah caused, Allah gave the order back to the whale to spit him on the shore. And what happened? He came out and started to walk, but there's body aching and skin because of the acid. And when the sun came, started to burn his skin. What did Allah make for him? Allah said, وَأَنْبَثْنَا عَلَيْهِ شَجَرَةً مِنْ يَقْطِينَ Allah granted him a tree to give him a shade. Some people said it is a pumpkin tree. It is a pumpkin tree. Allah calls for the shade to protect him and to protect the skin from the sun. Allah gave him nourishment. Allah gave him the food. Allah caused him to eat and drink and get the shade till he became healthy one more time and he started to move back to his people. And all of a sudden, he found the surprise. What is the surprise? That all his people became Muslims. All of them turned to Allah and they believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But just, I wanted to tell you something. I wanted to take that lesson to our life. How many of us got swallowed by the whale? Imam, do we have whales? Yes, of course. We have lots of whales. This dunya is a big whale. Lots of people got swallowed by entertainment, desires, whims, lasters, the haram. Lots of people got busy with taking care of their own life. They became overwhelmed. How many of us, and we try to be honest, how many of us overthinking of the future? What is going to happen? When I'm going to get that money? What about tomorrow? How can I fix this? What about my children? What about their school? Their graduation? My job? My income? My family? My car? My house? My bills? We became overthinking of that. How much do you think of Allah per time? And how much do you think about your financial issues. What is your dream? You dream of getting money or you dream of entering Jannah? How many whales had swallowed us to the point that we became overwhelmed over thinking of this dunya? A lot of people. Now they complain of stress, depression, Anxiety, worry, fear of tomorrow, fear of the future, seems like, I don't accuse them, but it seems like they forgot that there is Allah. How many of us, under the layers of the sin, and shaitan comes to you and tells you, you know what? No way out. No way that you become a good believer. You just go for Jum'ah, attend Jum'ah until the Imam finishes and that's it. Let's go back to our normal life. And even you forget about your daily salah, about daily dhikr for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I came today to tell you, 
Do not lose hope in the mercy of Allah. I came today especially to tell you even if you had layers of darkness above your head, do not stop glorifying Allah. Do not stop making tawbah for Allah. Do not stop praying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sayyiduna Yunus had three layers of darkness. The darkness of the belly of the whale. The darkness of the ocean. The darkness of the night. But yet, he remembers Allah. He never forget Allah. La ilaha illa anta subhanak. Inni kuntu min al-dhalimeen. No matter what you have in your life, if you have lots of thinking in your life, I understand this life is not easy at all. I did not came from Mars. I came from here. But I can tell you, life can be easy when you feel Allah in your side. Life can be good and you get the happiness when you feel the support of Allah, you are not alone. You have a creator who created you, who gave you money, who gave you job, who gave you family, who gave you children, who gave you stability, who gave you that house. Remember what you had before and what you have now. Who granted you all of that? That is Allah. As He saved you hundreds of times, he will save you again. But just get Allah to your side. Get Allah in your heart. Be that person. No matter what happens to him, be strong and say, I have Rabb next to me. And of course, Sayyidina Yunus acknowledged his mistakes. That's why it doesn't matter if you disobeyed Allah before. You have sins. You have shortcomings. I can tell you, if your shortcomings, millions, Allah's mercy in billions, you have a chance to go back to Allah. Do not let the shaitan deceive you. Do not let the shaitan trick you. Be that person who is always relying on Allah, depending on Allah. Rasulullah said in the hadith, do not think for a moment that any of you is better than the Prophet Humans. Do not underestimate him. Do not say, oh well, that's a Prophet of Allah and he did that, so I am an angel. No, wait, that was, that was a test from Allah to teach us. To teach us. We as Muslims, we should involve in saying this dua a lot. Please, convey this message out of me. Tell your wife, if she started to tell you that we have that and that and that to pay and we need to get that and that and that to eat, tell her, yes, we will work. Yes, we will do our part. Yes, I will go and sweat to get it. But at the end of the day, we have to believe that there is a Rabb who will take care of our affairs. And if we wanted to make the life more easy and smooth, get Allah in your side. Have Allah in your heart. Let your life believe in Allah. And no matter what is going to happen, if we have Allah, He's going to save us. Memorize this dua. Say it in every salah. Teach your wife, teach your children to say this dua. Even your child, if he got depressed because of the homework, because of the grades, the courses that he wanted to finish, Dad, I want to get that, I want to get that, tell him. Let him write this on board 
on in front of his desk. La ilaha illa anta subhanak inni kuntu min al-dhalimi. May Allah guide us to the right path. May Allah open our hearts for the guidance. Ameen, ya Rabbil Alameen. Aqulu qawli hadha. Astaghfirullah. إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن سيدنا محمدا عبد الله ورسوله اللهم صل وسلم وبارك عليك سيدي يا رسول الله من الله سبحانه وتعالى give us the rewards of Jumu'ah اللهم آمين and سبحان الله رب العالمين one one point before we start our صلاة our gathering Allah, this is one of the good times that we could live as Muslims. That we thank Allah, that we have masjid that we can gather in. We thank Allah that we have shade to pray under. We thank Allah that He facilitated our ibadah. You drove your car, you parked there, you enter the masjid, you are about to pray. What a big ni'mah. Think about other Muslims are hiding. Hiding to pray. They are hiding their identity. They are hiding. They cannot find a masjid to pray. Alhamdulillah, this is ni'mah. And just I wanted to remind you, when the time of the corona, was so severe and the masjid was locked. Lots of people were crying, we need to go back to the masjid. And nowadays, when things get to back to the normal, people didn't appreciate the ni'mah and some of them started to miss the masjid back and we became busy. That's why we do not feel the blessings of Allah unless we lose it. Give back to the masjid. Let your children be connected to the masjid. If you wanted them to be good, if you wanted them to be nice, if you wanted them to be good servants of Allah, if you wanted your children to be better than you, bring them back to the masjid. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shower all of us with His mercy. And may Allah protect our family members, our children. May Allah grant them success in their life. May Allah grant us happiness, stability, inner peace. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us taqwa in our hearts. May Allah grant us the intercession of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And may Allah make our iman stronger than before. May Allah forgive our sins. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make our houses full of happiness and stability. Allahumma ameen. Ya Rabbil Alameen. Aqulu qawli hadha. Astaghfirullahi wa lakum. Wa akum as-salam. Qum ila salatikum. Ya alhamdulillah.